let's go. Thank you very much, Axeli. Thank you for your presentation, Tiziano. Thank you to you all for being here. I hope um, that your expectation about the first part <laughs> will be positive after at the end of the first session, I can say. I hope so because I'm not sure. In any case, <coughs> I'm not a technician, that means that uh, my background, uh, I am an economist, I studied political economy, economic theory, and history of economic thought. So my backgrounds are mainly theoretical. And if I use applied economics, that is just uh, in order to make militant research in terms of labor transformation, new form of valorization, and analysis of financial markets. With uh, Carlo Bercellone, we are uh, doing uh, since a uh, lot of years uh, a research activity about what we call, uh, and other scholars call, uh, cognitive capitalisms to understand, to analyze, to underline the new form of accumulating, new form of uh, valorization, starting from the analysis of the structural changes in accumulation processes after the crisis of uh, for the stereos paradigm. So that will be, I, my speech will be divided in four points. Uh, the first point is quite a quick introduction. Uh, about uh, the concept and the evolution of formal valorization because I think that we have to have a clear idea of which are nowadays uh, in the new millennium the source, uh, the sources of valorization and uh, that leads to the second point that is uh, how this valorization which kind of uh, social relationship which kind of exploitation, we can say, which kind of dependency the new form of organization are able to renovate and innovate at the same time. And because if we are able to understand that we have a sort of framework about this kind of topic, then we can understand from one side how the new form of organization, in which, of course, financial markets play a very relevant role nowadays, how this form of organization are control, are monitor, how the values that we are all together are able to produce in a social cooperation activities expropriated by, by the capital. And because if you understand that, then we, are, we have uh, all the tools of the instrument to, to, to plan, to, to plan is too much, but to, uh, to think about uh, a, a counter program of the appropriation. Of this value that we, we produce and it is expropriated by ourselves in favor of uh, some oligarchic interests, some specific interests, and so on. So, <clears throat> the first point about um, valorization I, I presented. Is what, what is the second one? Form of valorization? The second is the types of exploitation. Exploitation? Yeah. The third is uh, how the governance of the exploitation by capital. And the fourth is how can we react? And that has to do with this. The fourth point is a, the main relevance, the main point, because uh, we talk about uh, different alternatives from uh, alternative currency from one side, socialization of uh, finance from the other side, the experiment of uh, Robin Hood's asset management cooperative, and so on, because there are different alternatives that we initially discussed and to, to, and to clarify. So, about, about the first point, I go very in, very rapid, very quick. Um, the, in this slide, uh, that is very summarizing slide, in which different uh, tools of, uh, of money function are represented according to the dynamic of history, from a barter economy to uh, all the evolution of money as a social invention, because money is a human social invention, doesn't exist in truth, uh, it's, it's not a natural given. And uh, it's one of the most inventions of the uh, human capacity, like, like, uh, like fire, like uh, something like that, at primordial time. And, uh, and of course, money is, is born, uh, is born as, uh, uh, with two main functions. It is a means of payment and unit of value. And this is the, the core functions of money all around its history. According to the evolution of history, according especially if we focus on a Europe context, that is, of course, uh, I don't want to 
to be accused to be uh, too much uh, Eurocentric. But uh, if we look for the moment for simplicity to <coughs> Europe, we can see that with the formation of national state <coughs> in the <coughs> between the 15th and 16th century, uh, <coughs> there is a change in the way of money, in which money is produced from uh, uh, commodity money linked to directly to, to gold or to some minerals, in which uh, the, the form of the money is directly represented its value, and uh, there is a the transformation in uh, notes in uh, legal money with uh, the new role played by money as a store of value, as a liquidity. And here starts the long trend toward uh, the total dematerialization of money that will happen after the collapse of Bretton Woods Agreement in uh, 1971. In, after then, uh, money became a poor sign, we can say. And so here starts the history of Wirtham money. And so the, the possibility nowadays to speak about cryptocurrency, virtual currency, is exactly because the evolution of history has led to us to overcome the materialization of money towards a completely virtual money. That is a, a, a chance, we can say. That is an opportunity, but it is a, at the same time a problem. Because uh, when money becomes pure sign, there is function as unit of value, was a primordial reason by which money is created, the unit of value of money tends to vanish, tends not to be so commensurable, not to be so clear. And that is uh, something that we have to discuss because one of the problems we have to face nowadays that has to do with the valorization processes is that we don't have no more a unit of measure of value. The old type of unit of measure of value, for instance, uh, linked to labor activity, that doesn't mean that disappear. They are still valid. They are still more valid nowadays than before. But uh, if uh, the valorization process nowadays is based on uh, an economic system in which finance money, that is uh, the last, uh, the last row in which there is a system that is money, commodity money, as in for basic material production. Now we have a changing system towards a money, commodity money, based on immaterial production, in which the key uh, variables for uh, that uh, are able to define the uniform accumulation are learning and network economies. That means dynamics, dynamics scale economies, which are inside the life of human beings. Learning is uh, something that is uh, strictly connected with human beings. We start to learn as soon as uh, we are born. And networks has to do with social relations, with cooperation. That is something that distinguishes human beings from animals, in, in certain ways. Very roughly speaking, I'm sorry for that. No? And, and, <coughs> so if now the new forms of accumulation are based on learnings and network economies, that means that uh, all the life, living activities, all the human faculties, from experience, uh, aesthetic, uh, sexual, gender, uh, sensibility, feelings, uh, affective, and uh, bodies, muscle, nervous, brain, uh, heart, all these kinds that is a complexity of human beings are in certain way, in a, at different stages, different levels, put inside the labor production activity. There is no more distinction between a time of labor, the productive labor in a max and capitalistic term, a labor that is able to produce some values, surplus values, sorry, and a time of living, of free time, that is uh, opus, it is uh, leisure time, it is time for playing, hmm? or leisure time, play time, Creative activities like artistic, cultural activities. What in, a, in a Roman language was called optim, or in Greek, uh, skole, in North Greek. Uh, all these activities are converging <coughs> toward a, produ a production activity, able to produce surplus value. It's our life that is directly embodied in the, in the, in the accumulation processes. 
So life is put to labor, not to work, to labor, because there is a distance, difference between labor and work. Life is put to labor and, and therefore to value. Now, in this, now the, here is, a, is the, the problem about this kind of transformation is to do how can we measure this value production. It's a paradoxical situation because from one side we have that the life activity in the the whole, we can say the whole or partial whole life activity is becoming more and more productive. But at the same time we are no more able to measure to measure this product. This 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 value created. So well, stepping from this point of view, which kind of uh, labor capital ratio transformation we are going to, to face? No. Marx told us that uh, in the transformation from pre capitalist mercantilism society to capitalistic society, there was a uh, a transformation of some key figures, some like the artisan, for instance, became uh, from uh, autonomous independent workers became salarized. It doesn't change his way or her way to work, to manage with, uh, uh, with uh, how I say, with, uh, with the means of production, generously. It was only salarized. And uh, it was put to work, and the capitalistic, the, fir the, the, the first uh, um, capitalistic, were able to enlarge much as possible the uh, labor day time. Hmm? From uh, 5 to 8 to 10 to 12 hours per day. Yeah. And that is what is that this passage is very really, roughly speaking, it's called the beginning of. Uh, is the result of primitive accumulation during mercantilism, and the kind of uh, subalternity of subsumption can be called, Max called, formal subsumption. That is, a sub, for, sometimes that is formal because the capacity of activity of the artisan didn't change a lot. It changed his social status, we can say, his legal status. But the way, the quality of his working changed, of course, because during the Industrial Revolution there was a technical change, of course, but not in, not in a relevant way in order to change uh, the way in which labor activity was organized. The passage, the, the, the passage from artisan way of production or the manufacturing and production activity in the first capitalist stage to the, what Marx called the factory system is a passage in which the technical change, the way in which labor is organized, is exploited, is not, is not only to do with, uh, with uh, legal status, with dependencies, with alternatives, but uh, the technical change was able to modify the degree of intensification of labor. <coughs> it's something that uh, has not to do with the uh, environment outside the border of the worker, but now the new technique, the new model of organization, the factory system, are coming inside the board. That, that is the, the, the new labor division was able to reach the maximum point with a terroristic factory system in which all the knowledge, all the um, learning process, all the experience of the worker are completely expropriated by the machine. We, or by the machinery system, by the machinery activity, according to the type of output produced. <coughs> Nowadays, that is a, called real subsumption. The passage from formal to real subsumption. Nowadays, which kind of uh, common, which kind of subsumption? We are, there is a situation in which <coughs> the relationship between um, this uh, relationship between something that is internal to us and something that is external to us was able to create a sort of dialectic, a <coughs> conflictual dialectic between body and machine. Now this kind of uh, divergence is going to be overcome because uh, 
the human beings are inside the machine as the machines are inside us. That is a technical transformation deriving from the passage from um, rigid, repetitive, mechanical technologies of uh, for this era to the dynamic, linguistic, communicative technologies of ICT technologies, information communication technology. This change, I don't want to, to give much stress on technology, of course, but technology is today is more relevant and more relevant than before, than in the past. In fact, uh, <clears throat> tomorrow we are going to discuss a lot about blockchains, technology, all these kind of things that I don't understand at all because I'm ignorant, but I, I can, I can, <clears throat> I have the feeling that they are important. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> and uh, so, in this kind of which, because when there was a separation between uh, <clears throat> our body and our brain, and we use our body, our muscle, manual labor, our brain for intellectual labor, and we apply <coughs> this situation to something that is external to us, we have a confrontation. We have a we can uh, organize a struggle against the machine. <laughs> that is a story of, uh, part of the story of uh, anti-capitalistic movement, mm? the sabotage. Mm? And uh, nowadays, when part of the machine is inside us, and this kind of situation leads to the human beings to be under a sort of uh, commodification structure, commodification structure, in which we are becoming machine, is a becoming machine of the brain, but uh, how can we, we are, how much we are aware of that, how much consciousness is about this kind of uh, process, and uh, which kind of governance, which kind of exploitation we can have. Oh, now there are different, there are big discussions about that. Uh, start about uh, Five years, ten, five, ten years ago, I don't know. There is, for instance, David Harvey that speak about uh, extraction. The capacity of valorization is based on the capacity of the labor organization, that is life organization, to extract. Like a, <clears throat> in this context, we are in presence of a new forms of uh, primitive accumulation, in which uh, we are coming back to a sort of formal substantial. That means we are free to act, or free. We think, or we are, have the illusion to be free and to have a free possibility of action when we are applying to cognitive relational labor activities because we have the idea that we are able to command this with the laptop. It's not the laptop that is able to command us like a machine in assembly lines. We, are, we have the illusion sometimes. I don't know if it's an illusion or it's not an illusion, but there is a dialectic relationship in which we are able to, um, to talk, to use language, artificial language, in which we make an interface. So there is something that is uh, interdependent. There is a correspondence. It's not more unilateral. So the idea is that we, in any case, we, are, we have more degree of freedom how to act. And so, and the capital organization, multinational, financial market, legal key, are able to capture this uh, interface between us and the way in which uh, our immaterial production is organized. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, that is why we can call <coughs> I disagree a little bit, that's not important. That is a coming back to the form, formal substantial, like the time of artisan, of crafts activity. The difference is that the craft activity, once upon a time, is based on <coughs> the ability of hands, hands craft. Now, there is no more hands. We use finger just to pick up it uh, on the computer, but the, the artisan activity, in brackets, is inside our brain. It's not inside our arm. Huh? And there is the illusion that we are, can reappropriate the knowledge 
that the terroristic organization of labor was able to expropriate by us through the machine. Uh, that is a, one is a, this is extraction, a way of, uh, uh, sub, of uh, subsumption. Some, some other scholars call it this kind of process, but they don't use the word sub, ex, um, extraction, but dispossession. That means that uh, you are free to produce something when the output is ready, then there is someone else that is able to steal it, you can say, to, to, to take it, because of a hierarchical and power bargaining, bargaining power. There is something that is too strong. And then <coughs> I think but, uh, that uh, in any case, the transformation of of labor activity due to the introduction of ICT technologies leads to new forms of uh, a modification of the intensification. <coughs> it goes to change from inside how the labor activity is organized. Uh, the, techno the new technologies, the linguistic technologies, increase in a very huge uh, term the, our productivity. It's not a productivity that can be measured at individual level. Uh, it's a social network productivity. It's a social productivity. Because all this kind of uh, labor organization is based on the social cooperation, the capacity of, communi of communicate in a social way with uh, traditional and new languages. And uh, so if it's true that uh, the new technologies change and increase intensification of labor, that means that in Marx and terms we are facing new form of real subsumption. So we have form, real uh, subsumption, a dispossession. This is a very complex situation that is. And each, 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 the perception of each subjectivity that is inside this kind of process, of course, is going to differ. Because the perception of his uh, activity uh, is uh, changed according to the type of the degree of uh, um, participation to the labor activity. Of course, there are some traditional, traditional uh, labor activities that dis disappear, the blue collar that exists a lot. In, more, in, uh, in, in, the, in the global world, probably the blue color number increase because of glo globalization respect uh, uh, 40 or 50 years ago. Uh, on the other side, all the new activities in, uh, in material services sector, communication, semiotic, uh, uh, finance, uh, assurance, uh, uh, all the new added high head value sectors like wealth, learning, uh, training, uh, all the, what, what once upon a time, uh, my very once upon a time, uh, we were used to call a public utility sector. <laughs> and now there is not the case that all these activity start to be liberalized and then privatized. And because they are the new source of valorization in a, on the technological human frontier. With wealth, for instance, in Greece you know better, no? but it's the same in Italy or in France, is one of the highest head, head value per capita uh, sector. Okay, what is uh, in health, the health sector. Because I, what is health? Well, ah, sorry, health. health. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <coughs> and <coughs> so, <coughs> no, no. That is uh, more or less uh, the framework uh, in which we are inside. <coughs> Very, no, no. How is it uh, possible to control all this kind of situation? There are different tools. I want to talk about two, and especially about one. The, the two issues are depth and Precarity. Precarity is a new form of labor organization. 
the central issue by precarity is the new forms of capital labor relationship. And uh, precarity is now life precarity, is an existence here, is structural, is generalized, is institutionalized, but even by industrial relationship, even by trade unions that should uh, fight against precarity. Mm? But most of the case, or they have a lot of difficulties in doing that, or they try to go for the precarity, and doing that, the result is that the precarity is going to increase. But I don't want to talk about precarity nowadays. You can understand that precarity means uncertainty, blackmailability, income intermittency, uh, so the blackmail for the needs is one of the best ways to reduce the conflictuality in the labor market. Could we, could we say that it's volatility? Social, social volatility? Social volatility, too. Uncertainty, blackmailability is what... I know what I'm doing now, but I don't know what will be my situation at the end of the month. Because I don't know if uh, I have enough income, uh, okay. especially when there is a sort of dismantling of welfare state apparatus and so on. And that is uh, quite clear to me. But the first point is about debt. Because that, that has to do with... Uh, the debt is uh, the, um, the dark side, not of the moon, as Pink Floyd's son, but the dark side of financialization. Because the financialization problem is able to increase exactly because debt situation are parallel, parallel, parallel way increasing. Every time there is a, a widening of a debt relationship, financial speculative is going to drink champagne. It is very happy. And uh, in fact, it's more crude. And now, what can we, how can we answer to this situation? I go to the, the end. Uh, there is a two possible alternatives. First one is giving an answer to the following question. Can we, if financial market are at the top of uh, accumulation of valorization process, because all this kind of social productivity, of social cooperation that we are able to provide, more or less instinctively, or just because we are living, this value where we can uh, find this way. Not, of course, not in the profits, in firms, in enterprises, or just in the little share. But all the increase of financial market is that because of the financial market, we can see a sort of uh, valorization of our social is uh, in, the, in the stock exchange index. For instance, in 2000, 2014, when the European stagnation or recession was still high, and the dynamics of the global economy was not uh, at the best because of the uh, decline of the Chinese growth and so on, the, stock ex the average stock ex exchange index of the global financial market increased by 23-25%. This 23-25% of uh, creation of value through capital gains, an average, uh, speaking very, where does it come from? From one side, there is a capacity, as it was written here, to make a modern money-to-money -money production. And that is uh, because money is poor side. And financial market is now the place where is possible to imagine a unit of measure of value by capital gains dynamics. But from the other side, this capital gains dynamics is linked to some material that is our life. Once upon a time, we call labor. 
And now we can go to life, because between life and labor there's no more a lot of separation. So the, we are, it's our lives that are positive in financial markets. And uh, is, that is the way in which we can have a sort of expropriation, extraction of them that happens in, in financial markets. So, facing these situations, coming back to the first question, how can we can we reappropriate or provide a sort of uh, distribution of these words? All right, the first, the first uh, trend would be we have to enter inside financial markets, provide some alternative tools, financial tools, using derivatives, options, futures, hedge funds, what you like, in order to and our goal is to reach a sort of socialization of financial markets. And here I just finished to read this report by Goldman Sachs. So the yeah, the also, yeah. Goldman Sachs, also Price Waterhouse Coopers, mm -hmm. they have uh, published a report on it. Yeah. On uh, socialization of funds. It's astonishing, right? Eh? That means how capital is much more faster than us. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, because it's very interesting to read it. And um, because uh, that is uh, it's all, it's already yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah. The ability of uh, to capture, to subsume every social innovation in a very short period in order to improve accumulation of organization <coughs> And that is a vicious circle that we need to break. Uh, the, part, the, the question is, can we break it from inside? I like <laughs> Bob to give an answer. I'm skeptical, personally. I'm skeptical. But maybe because but I don't know exactly how this kind of system works. So how the technicalities. But I don't think that this is the idea of Robin Hood, mm. asset management company, mm. to reach a sort of uh, internal socialization of finance. Because I think that the second way is, mm. the second way is not, I don't care, well, I study, of course, I have to remain up to date what's happening in the social media how the valuation process in the financial market are, uh, are going on, and so on and so on. But I have to bypass financial markets in order to reappropriate the value that we want to get created. And that means to make a sort of, not that, of uh, a sort of, uh, to build up an alternative financial market, but out of the traditional financial market, not inside. And uh, how we can do that? All right. First of all, all right, I'll show you this. So, all right, we're talking about the possibility to make an alternative financial system. That is very ambitious to say an alternative financial system. But very more, more precisely, we can talk about the possibility to build up from a community level, that means in a territory, in a context, in which there is a form of social cooperation already active, just operating, that may mean that they are constrained, which is a lot of uh, uh, in possibility of innovation at cultural different level, but they need for they need to be they are constrained by the fact that they need to be financed. <laughs> and um, this uh, alternative financial production framework is based by on an alternative currency that we high call uh, here money of the common, but uh, it would be fair coin, common coin, free coin, doesn't matter the name. The problem is that this coin is issued by by sort of institution. Institution doesn't mean that it's a public institution. 
institution just in philosophical terms. That means that the peer-to-peer -peer mining of uh, this alternative coin is a sort of institution. I intend in this way. It's not something that is a, a legal definition. That, now, this is a point that we need to discuss. Because from one side, it's different if we imagine the issue of uh, alternative currency by peer-to-peer -peer as, 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 as it is for Bitcoin. Because that it means that, that this alternative currency has no ball and has no geographical ball. If we, we think that we need an alternative currency starting from a, a community activity like the Isle of Athens, we can imagine a sort of institution that is able to issue a digital money, and then we have to discuss the form, how the participation in the issue of this money, and all these problems. Each of them should be discussed in a, in a deep and technical way. But we can imagine that uh, we are able to issue this alternative currency. One thing that is very important is that this alternative currency should be used in order to as finance money. That means that is issued in a certain amount because we need money to finance certain social projects. And second aspect that is quite important, to pay labor in form of mandatory wages. Because most of the activity of social cooperation is based on voluntary wages. And so I think that it's right that all the activity in the social cooperation should be paid. That there is new form of enslavement under the concept of voluntary job and voluntary activity and so on. So that means that, they, that, is, that means that this money is not issued for consumption in a direct way, as most of the complementary local alternative currencies they are on, on the earth. Or they are business to business currency like Sardex in Italy, or for increased liquidity for consumption in most parts of the world and so on. So I think that you know, that is an alternative way to imagine alternative currency. It means alternative currency is created in order to be invested. Then of course we are free that is the, the freedom that we have because we use an alternative currency. So we are not constrained by bank system, central banks, troika, and so on. And you, we are free to decide to which use is this money that we create. According to a democratic participatory process of the community, of the reality that is going to issue this well. In order to have what we can call an anthropogenetic model of human production for human beings, the production of use values instead of exchange values. And if this alternative production activity, that is a production, material, material, cultural, not cultural, what, 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 what uh, everyone decides to do? No? Of course, as I think, has to do a sort of relation with a local institution, with a municipality. I don't care if this municipality is right wing, left wing, or whatever, but mm -hmm. that, uh, in that conceptual level of the idea. In municipality, because uh, I think that one of the ways in which a money, an alternative money, can be trusted, so can, uh, because money is linked to a degree of trust. You have to trust the man in order to accept the money, of course. And one of the ways that history gave us, gave us uh, to provide the trust of money is that with this trust you pay taxes. You pay taxes. And if uh, you can use this money to pay taxes, and you pay the tax for it's enough uh, a small share of taxes. Uh, of taxes then this money is able to circulate inside and we can able to imagine an alternative balance sheet of the municipality. 
like we have to do wallet. <laughs> One official euro wallet with a regional balance in euros that is uh, under the constraint of uh, stability pacts and so on. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, at this, the same time, you have an alternative wallet, an alternative portfolio that is in this alternative currency, and you can do, and you are, you have more degree of freedom in using, and that is a, <coughs> this, by using material is just to finance common fare, basic income, free access to public utilities, housing, education, health, etc., etc. Or if you are <coughs> using this money for uh, alternative production uh, activities, then you can uh, improve uh, learning network economies, free social cooperation, uh, and, uh, and you can have a sort of a remuneration of uh, general interactivity of the, of the community. <coughs> and that is uh, how this, the alternative currency is inside all the valorization cycle. Because one of the problems, one of the risks that we have is that we use all the, a part of the valorization, valorization cycle and we create the money only for a part of this valorization cycle. And for consumption, for realization, for a certain kind of investment, while if you wanted to provide an alternative financial world system, that means that we have to cover all the valorization production cycle, not only a part. All right, now here, just to finish. I have one question. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Well, I think that one of the ways in which Robin Hood can end in this theoretical framework, this is theoretical, I don't want to make an application because that, that is something that I think that we could discuss, is that with a parasite, mm -hmm. it that the parasite is to enter into the traditional financial market, to make a reappropriation in order to finance alternative services. Mm -hmm. That is something that's going down mm -hmm. in the financial institutions as mm -hmm. As you issue the alternative currency, at the same time, you make yeah. alternative edge funds. So you are able to compensate, you are flexible in this way. So when uh, there are something that's going wrong mm -hmm. in the financial markets, and the graph you show that it's up and down, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. obvious, then you can compensate with the issue of alternative currency, and at the same time you are giving a, a, a you provide a, the idea that is possible to act differently from financial market. And at the same time, this idea supports the fact that you can use appropriate tools to enter and to make a sort of I don't know English what to do, a sort of Bills inside the financial market. An alternative bills inside the financial market part side, mm. you know, that is alternative inside the financial market, and that is covered by the fact that in any case we are and we have an alternative financial system. Mm. That is uh, that's all. Uh, okay. I, I just talk about it. Mm. Okay.